Okay, I did the register file for Verilog, and this is my presentation. Um, what's a register file? A register file consists of a set of registers that can be read and written by supplying a register number to be accessed. So, for instance, in MIPS, when you wanted to load a word from a register or save a word to a register, you'd give it the register number, and that's what this is doing here. So we have five inputs, and we have two outputs, and how this works is that R1 is mapped to out1. So I guess you could say the index of the register that you input into R1, so register 1. The data stored in R1 would be here in the output. Same thing for R2. So if you passed in register index 2, then the data stored in register index 2 would be an out2. And you're right in your data. So your data is going to be the data that you want to write, and your W1 is going to be the index of the register you want to write it to. So if you want to write, um, let's say, decimal 10, then you would pass decimal 10 in here. It obviously wouldn't be a decimal, it would be in binary. <clears throat> and then this would be the register you want to save it to. So say register 3. And write enabled, that's just going to be a 1 or a 0. It's just a wire, and it's just going to say whether or not you can write it there. So um, we're going to go over functionality. Da, da, da. Let's keep going. So this is my register file. I obviously did not do a structural. I chose to go with behavioral. And so if we're going to break it down, I have a lot of comments that so you could read them. But uh, the register numbers to read, so well, I need to change that. It's actually only three bits because you're only counting to eight, or really only counting to seven. Eight would put you too far. So what this is is that you have an array of three, three bits. So you can count 000, 001, 010, all the way up to seven. And that gives you eight spots. That's your eight registers. Um, they also, so W1, that's going to be what the register number you're writing to. That's the uh, input wire. And the data is all 32 bits, so it's an array of 32. And your output, there's two of them. Both of those are 32 bits. And this is pretty much an array of an array I made. So it's eight spots, or it's, you can look at it, I guess, it would look like uh, eight registers each with 32 bits. So that's what that's saying. Um, I chose to use it always. Realistically, I guess we'd need to implement a clock at some point, but um, I didn't see a clock wire going to it in the diagram that was in the video, so I went with an always. So um, always star just pretty much says build my sensitivity list for me, so it's not waiting on something. You could write it so that out is saved <coughs> every time R1 changes or something like that, but uh, I went with this way. So pretty much if you have a signal on this WE wire, go ahead and write it because you're allowed to write and <clears throat> it's going to write it to the destination that you've put in there and whatever you're passing in that D1, which is like 32 wires really, so it's an array, it's, uh, it's going to save all that there. And that's what these are doing. So when you have an equals that looks like this, you're saving each individually. So um, that's what I have there. And I think the overview, the next thing. Okay, inflammation. Yeah, test cases. So here's my test file. Um, I took like a brute force whack at it. So it's like 260 lines, but obviously I copied and pasted a lot of lines I needed. So uh, my testing approach, uh, each one of them tests a range. Uh, it loads registers I minus 3 and I. Uh, so you can kind of see that if there's not like a minus 3, it doesn't, obviously. But... Um, it, it tests every single register. So I test register 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then past that, I even test register values. Let's see which ones I test. Uh, test register values 8. So 1 past it. And since we're only using 3 uh, digits there, or 3 bits, I mean, um, 8 in binary is going to flip you all the way back around to a 0. So you're going to be messing with the 0th register, which I put in my notes. And uh, test 11, which rolls you back around as well. So uh, some notes to consider with this one. It doesn't handle negative numbers. That's another thing I tested for at the very bottom. It, uh, it, it just doesn't do that. Um, we're not using the clock. So uh, we talked about that before. Inputs based on three bits. So zero, zero, yeah, like I said, if you select an eight, which would be in binary, would be 1,000 um, or 1,000, zero, 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 it would roll you back over to zero, zero, zero. 
And also, if you try to read and write at the same register, you're going to load, and you're trying to load that one, you're like, you're loading R2, and you're also writing in R2, or, uh, sorry, if you're loading register 0, and you're saving in register 0, it's going to print out your saved value. So you can kind of see that um, I ran up not long ago. It's a lot to go through, but I am fairly certain it works, as long as you don't use negative numbers. Um, okay, and why I chose behavioral over structural is the last thing. There's a link in my sources right here. You can go check it out. This is the source I use for uh, writing a lot and learning a lot of what the register file is doing, so it's really helpful. It's a PDF. This one right here, <laughs> you can kind of see this guy took a stab at it, and this is one of the few ones, um, you know, an actual structural d design or a uh, model I could find, whereas I could find a ton of behavioral ones. Um, and you can kind of see his layout. So this is only for a 16-bit, and each one of these register parallels, of course, is not that simple. Um, you can see here there's an array of 16 of them because they're 16 bits. So you'd need multiplexers. You're going to need octal decoders. Um, other than that, this one is kind of designed for a 16-bit by 8 register. So doubling these to a 32-bit, this would work, but you can kind of see the amount of code that goes into this is no laughing matter. <laughs> it keeps going. Um, and you can kind of see what's going on here. He's using an AND for each wire, so you would need 32 of these ANDs. And uh, these are all just like ones that we've already made, like the latches and stuff. So I could have pulled in some of those, but I would need to build the multiplexer, the octal decoder. And uh, this, this website's nice because it gives you, you know, all your signals to help you test. But other than that, <clears throat> I think that's about it. It was fun.